Hey everyone, Daniel here and welcome back to another video. I hope all of you are having a great day out there. As always, here today we need to talk about Voyager Digital because they just went ahead and geared up for a acquisition. So in this video, we got to talk about exactly what's going on here on the front of a potential acquisition, how that might impact the company. Then we're going to go through the Toronto Stock Exchange uplisting, the timeline, how that might impact the company. And lastly, we'll finish it off by taking a look at an update with Voyager Digital pertaining to their lending program and and app store ranking. So if you end up enjoying this video and finding some value in it, please consider subscribing and let's get into it. So first and foremost here, Voyager Digital down around one and a half percent at this point here today, trading at around $16.34. All cryptocurrency related stocks, or at least a majority of them are down here today. But Voyager Digital more specifically, here today, they went ahead and released a report. And in that report, they stated that they're essentially gearing up for an acquisition. So before we go through the implications, let's go through the this report and give you an in-depth look into exactly what's going on here. So it's just a couple of minutes of reading. So first and foremost, this preliminary short form base shelf prospectus relates to the offering for sale from time to time during the 25 month period from this prospectus. So uh, before we keep going here, a preliminary short form base shelf prospect is at its core, this allows Voyager Digital uh, to essentially issue dilution at any point in time. And in the case of uh, this report here, they're allowed to issue $300 million of shares at any moment in time. We're going to go through exactly what this means on a potential dilution percentage in a moment here. But uh, anyways, let's keep going here, including any amendments uh, here too, remains effective of the securities of Voyager Digital listed above in one or more series or issuances with a total offering price of such securities in the aggregate of up to 300 million US dollars. That is a big number, potentially gearing them up for a large acquisition or equivalent of Canadian dollars, yada, yada, yada. Uh, the securities may be offered separately or together in amounts at prices and on terms to be determined by, uh, based on market conditions and at the time of sale and set forth in the accompanying prospectus su supplements, right? And next thing, uh, obviously this explains exactly what might happen, $300 million of potential dilution with shares or warrants, other things along those lines. It can be issued all at once. It can be issued in multiple chunks. But over the next two years here, Voyager has the opportunity to sell up to $300 million worth of shares, at least uh, given this report here. Now, the next paragraph, and this is very short here. In addition, the securities may be offered and issued in consideration for the acquisition of other businesses, assets, or securities by the company or a subsidiary of the company. The consideration for any such acquisition may be con uh, consist of any of the securities separately, a combination of securities, or any combination of, among other things, securities, cash, and the assumption of liabilities. Very, very interesting things here, guys. At its core, this report tells us, all right, Voyager Digital, any point over the next two years, they can purchase any business whatsoever, acquire any corporation for up to 300 million US dollars. So let's take a look at uh, what this means on a potential valuation basis here. Let's do the math first and foremost. So, you know, with Voyager Digital, they're currently trading at around $16.34 per share. The fully diluted market cap of the company currently sits at around 172 a million shares. So if you multiply those two together, you get a fully diluted market cap, at least here today at $2.8 billion. So we take this $2.8 billion. We know there's 300 million US dollars of potential dilution. We can plug that in right here and divide the two, right? So we have a 300 million divided by roughly 2.8 and we get roughly the potential for 10.6% dilution. Now, the thing is, this can happen at any point over the next two years. So if the share price increases, the potential dilution decreases as a percentage of the total market cap. But what's the bottom line here? Voyager has the potential to acquire a business. They haven't issued any dilution yet, but they have the potential to do so. Now, talking about previous dilution or previous acquisitions at Voyager, we can take a look at their timeline here. And uh, we have three main acquisitions that Voyager has done over roughly the past two years at this point, first and foremost, Ethos, then Circle, and then LGO. And all three of these helped Voyager's business in some way, shape, or form. And now Ethos 
Cosmos. Uh, this is a cryptocurrency wallet. You can hold different cryptocurrencies within it. Voyager Digital went ahead and essentially bought out Ethos. A lot of their customers went over to Voyager and they also acquired the Ethos token. This is also, again, uh, when we talk about the VGX token, this originally uh, did belong to Ethos. Something important uh, to note, it did shift to VGX. So that was the Ethos acquisition. It helped build a community, again, with Voyager Digital, transfer some customers, etc. But on the topic of the Circle acquisition, again, Circle was a cryptocurrency brokerage slash exchange. Voyager went ahead, acquired them, and acquired their customer base. So talking about the previous acquisitions, or at least uh, pretty much the first two acquisitions that Voyager uh, did do, both of these essentially allowed Voyager Digital to increase their customer base. In the case of Circle here, adds over 40,000 retail accounts to Voyager's customer base. But when we talk about Voyager at this moment in time, they don't need an increase of customers. They can grow naturally through marketing or referral programs, partnerships with influencers, etc. They don't need uh, to acquire a company for the sake of growth. Sure, previously they did uh, they did so, uh, but they don't really need that at this moment in time. Now, the third acquisition here, they acquired LGO. And the reasoning behind acquiring LGO is for a regulatory license. And this is the company, LGO. Uh, because Voyager acquired LGO, they are now eligible to essentially participate in the European market. They have an entity within Europe and they're able to expand there at a moment's notice. As we know, when it comes to Voyager's expansion, the main bottleneck at this moment in time is growth and scaling of their platform. Once they end up doing so, expansion into Europe will come very soon. But talking about this LGO acquisition, this is the thing that allows them to expand into Europe and obviously benefits them in a major way once they end up doing so. Now, also talking about the VGX token, LGO a token as well. There are two separate cryptocurrencies. We're going to merge the two. And some are speculating that potentially as the LGO token is more of a European entity, VGX is American, maybe European expansion comes after the VGX token merger, uh, because that almost marks the end of the merger between LGO and Voyager, the merger of a European and American company. Maybe after that happens, Voyager expands into Europe. Again, just speculation on that part, in my opinion. Uh, expansion into Europe will come potentially in the back half of this year, late summer, potentially moving into the winter. That's my personal opinion on that. But again, very exciting growth opportunity there. But anyways, on the topic of a potential acquisition, these are the three acquisitions that Voyager essentially uh, did just a couple of, you know, over the past couple of years rather. But moving forwards into what Voyager may acquire, we got to go to their product roadmap. And this is on their investor presentation here. We just got to scroll down a little uh, about future growth opportunities. Obviously, we have covered a lot of these uh, business to business partnerships, desktop, debit card, credit card, margin, new asset listings, traditional banking products, equities, international mergers and acquisitions and a self custody wallet. In addition to this, uh, you do have payment processing, uh, which Voyager is expanding into. But talking about all of these different things, I see two separate paths when it comes to Voyager's potential acquisition, obviously worth up to $300 million. One, in the sense that will help it will help rather accelerate expansion into a new business opportunity, whether that be, again, a potential credit card, self-custody, wallet, payment processing, other things along those lines. That is one potential route, expanding into something that they already plan on getting into. But another opportunity is buying a company that Voyager isn't really uh, planning to expand into, or rather uh, buying a company that plays in a certain sector that Voyager doesn't plan on expanding into. So whether that's cryptocurrency security or safety, maybe something like a chain analysis, obviously that's a much bigger company, but a company that competes in a similar space to chain analysis, uh, maybe big digital, again, I, I do own big digital stock, but uh, talking about a potential acquisition, I see a scenario where Voyager either acquires a company that competes in some of these products that we see here, or a company that potentially plays in a sector outside of Voyager's already existing product roadmap. That is my personal opinion. But either way, if Voyager ends up purchasing some form of a company for that $300 million, it will more likely than not bring a lot of value to Voyager shareholders to a point where it's maybe like a five plus one equals eight or equals nine or equals 10 situation where they're paying $300 million. But this business will more likely than not bring in billions of dollars of value in the coming years. That's my personal opinion on it. Let's speculate in the comment section down below. What businesses do you think Voyager may acquire and what sectors of businesses do you think Voyager will acquire? Let me know in the comment section down below. I'm interested in hearing your thoughts. So now that we talked about 
about this potential acquisition. Let's move forward to the Toronto Stock Exchange uplisting, obviously a big catalyst to watch for Voyager Digital. Now, a member or rather, you know, a fan of the channel, he sent me a DM on Twitter. He emailed the uh, investor relations page on Voyager. And this is a timeline that we have heard in the past. But when it comes to the uplisting to the Toronto Stock Exchange, the investor relations page at Voyager confirmed that they are targeting the end of July for an uplisting to the Toronto Stock Exchange. Now, this is a big deal. As we know, Voyager currently participates or rather is listed on three main exchanges, one, the Canadian Securities Exchange, one, the OTC Exchange over the counter within the United States, and three, the Frankfurt exchange within Europe. But talking about an uplisting to the Toronto Stock Exchange from the Canadian Securities Exchange, that is a big deal and almost parallel to uh, the difference between the OTC exchange within the United States and the NASDAQ. The Toronto Stock Exchange is the premier uh, exchange within Canada and uplisting to the Toronto Stock Exchange brings a lot of benefits to Voyager shareholders. We've talked a lot of it or rather a lot about this on the channel before. And one of the main things when it comes to Voyager Digital's ridiculously cheap valuation is perception and the fact that investors are not valuing Voyager in the proper way. But when they do uplist to the Toronto Stock Exchange, this opens up a whole new door of opportunities, first and foremost, for institutions to go ahead and buy Voyager shares, obviously on a uh, relatively low tier uh, stock exchange like the Canadian Securities Exchange. Not a lot of institutions can actually go ahead and buy Voyager shares, but once they do upgrade to the Toronto Stock Exchange, that opens up potential room for institutions to start buying Voyager. Currently, that number sits at a very, very low percentage. But moving forwards, if they do uplist to the Toronto Stock Exchange, we could see a bump of institutional ownership. You also have more liquidity, easier to borrow money or raise capital through dilution, things along those lines. Potentially a larger investor community base when it comes to uh, stocks listed on the Toronto Stock Exchange. They generally have more reputation. They're more reputable than companies listed on the Canadian Securities Exchange. And again, this is a relatively parallel with the NASDAQ in the sense that if you're listed on the Toronto Toronto Stock Exchange, you are one of the premier companies out there, or you have the reputation of some of the largest companies within Canada. And obviously that helps uh, build a larger community base and more talk around your company alongside that. So the more eyes that get on Voyager, the better. And the Toronto Stock Exchange uplisting is almost that first step that will allow more eyes to get onto Voyager digital stock and will hopefully benefit, uh, benefit Voyager over the coming years here. Now, uh, next thing I'm going to cover here is Voyager Digital's interest program. As we know, Voyager Voyager updates their interest rates on a monthly basis, and they generally change relatively significantly month over month. But something that Voyager did comment here on uh, Twitter, uh, when it comes to the change in interest rates on their lending program, they just confirmed that uh, essentially when it comes to Bitcoin and Ethereum, the rates on those two cryptocurrencies will be locked until the end of 2021, which is very, very good. And uh, I mean, if you're a user of the Voyager platform, having a situation where interest rates are locked is a big positive as a majority of companies out there like BlockFi or other lending platforms, pretty much all of them have interest rates that change month over month over month. But if Voyager can go ahead and lock in interest rates for upwards of six months, that is a big deal and potentially a deal breaker when it comes to someone choosing between something like Voyager or BlockFi for interest or rather holding Bitcoin, Ethereum uh, for that aspect of interest. So that's obviously big on that front. They're going to make an announcement more formally soon, but great to hear that from Voyager again, continue, uh, continuing to execute on a high level. Last thing I want to touch on here before we get going, App Store rankings. It does look like Voyager is hovering around this uh, a 60 to 50 range when it comes to their uh, ranking in the top charts uh, in the finance section of the App Store. Uh, the Google Play Store, they are ranked a little bit higher there. I think it's closer to the 30th place on the finance section of the top charts. But one of the bigger things I want to point to is App Store reviews. If we take a look at kind of the, uh, rather the ratio of negative comments to positive comments, we can see that back again, May, April, uh, you know, uh, potentially going back to March, there was a lot of negativity when it came to Voyager delays, customer service team wasn't up to par, a lot of things along those lines. 
What we've seen happen here over at least the past couple of weeks and past couple of days is a lot more positivity when it comes to reviews on the app store. This is very good and makes me feel very confident as a Voyager digital shareholder and as a token holder as well. You can actually look through the comments and see some pretty positive comments, which is you know something that you absolutely love to see. And if you're an investor in Voyager digital stock or the VGX token, again, this should make you very confident. So uh, last thing I want to touch on here before we do get going, obviously we have the potential announcement of the VGX token swap here today, potentially after 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So I'm going to try and make an update if it does end up coming after six o'clock. I am busy, but I'll have some form of an update. If I have to do it in the middle of the night, I will do so. I really am looking forward to this potential update. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below about this whole situation, potentially Voyager Digital acquiring a company, uplisting to the Toronto Stock Exchange and sentiment around Voyager changing when it comes to their actual app. Anyways, guys, thank you all so much for watching this video and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye-bye.